Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive, and today we're going to talk about how come everybody wants to make games and nobody makes games. And so, it's a common thing in life. It's a common thing to kind of go, I want to do this thing, and get really excited about it, and you see lots of people do it, your friends will do it, just pick something you want to do, you try it for a day or two, then you realize it's not really for you, or it's not going to work out because of something else, and then you kind of just let it go. But... I want to talk about how come particularly everybody wants to make games. Like, if you're a person who plays a lot of games, there's definitely a time in your life where you thought, hmm, I think it would be awesome if I made a game. And then you come back to it and you realize, no, I, I don't think I'm going to make games. I don't think I'm going to make games. Or you, you talk about, you're like, I want to make games, I want to make games, I want to make games. And then you spend most of your life just talking about how one day you're going to make games and you don't actually make games. And I was this person for a long time. I thought, man, one day I would love to make games. And and it's such a process. It's such a process. There is such a learning curve different than other things I've done. And so let's talk about what makes making games so difficult and what makes it so different and why no one does it. So I get into things. I'm a guy who likes to get in and learn how to do something. I'm and 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 I've done this before. I loved making videos. I went to school for making videos. I learned a ton about making videos. I use video editing software. I'm a video editing software affiliate now with Vegas Creative Software and you can even buy the software in the link below to uh, help us out. But uh, <laughs> that kind of stuff took a lot of time and it took a lot of practice but it kind of was approachable I didn't have to go asking people how to do it and spend a lot of time searching on the internet I just kind of picked up a camera I started I had a friend who did it I kind of once I had that entryway I started taking step after step after step and getting better and better at it and using different softwares and learning more about what I'm doing and then I kind of just got into it and then I was like I can do videos and I have made lots of videos for money because I know what I'm doing and uh, that took some time but I was able to do it. It took years of practice but I was able to do it relatively. I just I wanted to and I did it. I took the practice, I took the time, I got the education, I, I did it. And so the same thing with computers. Uh, I have a background as a computer technician. I am uh, CompTIA Plus certified and Net Plus certified. Uh, how did I get into that? Well with cameras being such a computer oriented thing, with cameras being so big about needing high quality computers and high quality video editors and file types and codecs and things like that. Uh, I, I had a head for IT because I had done so much troubleshooting. I st installed my own Firewire card and then that didn't work and then I had to reinstall the drivers for it. Then it started working and then uh, I had to have a friend build me, actually that friend was Steven, build me uh, a, a custom computer to edit high def video. So by the end of that I started, I just started um, tinkering with the computer I had, adding parts. Eventually uh, I got help building another computer uh, in general. And so once I had built a computer, then I built some computers for uh, different people and then started helping other people with their computer problems. And then I was like, I want to get into IT. And so that was very approachable. When I decided to that uh, my, I wanted my full-time job to be IT, which it isn't anymore, but it was uh, for, for five years, I I got my A plus certification and I just looked up how to get certified in IT. A plus came up. I talked to a friend of mine who was in IT and he was like, "Oh, uh, I know about this. He's actually a developer, but uh, his 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 uh, dad owned a company that um, fixed you know was an IT company, and so." So uh, he knew all about the A plus cert that I was looking at and into, and so we studied for it together. We met at Starbucks on Wednesdays for about an hour and a half at a time, and uh, you know, like we gave ourselves our own college course. I bought a textbook in it, and I just we read through the textbook. We did little quizzes at the end. We talked about it with each other. We gave ourselves our own little class, and I got my A plus certification. And then uh, with my video background and stuff like that, I applied for an IT job, and I got it. And I got an IT job, and I learned about IT. Was I dumb back then? Yes. Did I know anything that I thought I knew? No. I've learned a crap ton since then. But the fact of the matter, the story is, I got into IT. I wanted into video stuff. I got into it. I wanted into IT. I got into it. Game development is my latest interest. I've been looking into that for the past two or three years. I've been like, game development, huh? 
game development. And with a background in video and stuff, I was like, this should be easy for me to jump into. I know IT, I know a little bit of programming, I know, I know um, video production and stuff, I know about laws of competition, I've had a little bit of art training, I've like, I, I've got a background in, uh, I've had writing classes and things like that too. I was like, video games involve writing and music, I've, uh, I did band for six years in school, I knew how to read music uh, and, you know, write it a little bit. Writing music's different than reading it, but, you know, I knew how to read music. I'd played in a, a, uh, my own personal band for a long time. I had a lot of experience composing music with friends and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, so this should be something I should be easy to jump into. I know so much about the periphery areas, but I don't really know anything about, you know, game development. And that's when I realized how hard it was. I just started looking into, like, how do I make games for a living? And everybody's going, how do you make games? And you can take one of two paths. You can make your own games, or you can make a game for somebody else. But you don't want to make a game for somebody else when you don't know what you're doing. So how do you learn what you're doing? Well, you just make your own games. Well, how do you do that? Oh, man, that's a big question. And it's a big question for a couple of reasons. One, making games is its own art and science. Okay, so a lot of people think, like, I just have this idea for a game. I think it would be fun to catch butterflies. So you want to make a butterfly catching game. Well, like there's rules to that. So, like, there's a thing called affordance, right? It's what you actually, the information that you give the player. You learn this through game design stuff, and you learn, like, how can you tell if you're a butterfly game when a butterfly can be caught or not be caught? Like, what's the visual cue for that? Uh, you have to decide. There's, there's, it's not just about art styles and presentation and 3D modeling. It's actually about, like, learning what game developers do to make games fun, what game mechanics do, how they work, how they come together, what different types of games are, what different players are looking for in games, all of that's an actual study that they do. And I started watching these videos, uh, Extra Credits was a channel I watched for a long, long time, and, and Mark Brown is like the guy for this. If you're wanting to know more about this, you need to check out Mark Brown's GMTK, Game Maker's Toolkit, and his series Boss Keys on YouTube. This is Mark Brown, GMTK. He is, he is the guy about game design. So I just started watching his videos and other people's videos. I just started watching game design videos religiously for years. I kept thinking, that'd be neat. That would be neat. That would be neat to do. And then eventually, I kind of I started looking at games with a critical eye. I started really better understanding like what game design was, why they were making those decisions. Much like with video and film, I was able to start watching video and start realizing where they put the camera, why they made that decision. I started understanding the behind the scenes because I started doing it. I started understanding the behind the scenes of gaming stuff. So that was that was huge. That was big. That's a big thing. Uh, but why am I not still a game developer? Well, so then I had to get shoulder surgery and I thought this is a great time to just dive in and learn how to actually make a game. And uh, I had tried before a couple of times. I tried a Unreal Engine. Everyone said that was easy, didn't need a lot of programming skills to do it because you could map stuff without programming. It was not easy. There are like no tutorials about it. All these, just all these buttons and interactions and physics. Here's the thing about game development. You are making a world. It's a world. It's a world that has rules and an art style. It's a world that has to interact with itself. It's a world that has physics. And it's a world that has um, um, joints. And it's a world that has layers. And it's a world that has all these things and all these buttons. And Unity here, all these buttons, I just don't know what they do. I don't know... Uh, I didn't know for a long time. Like, I got understood, like, the lighting part of it, kind of, but then it kept talking about baking light. And I was like, what does that mean? No one in videography talks about baking light or not. And I understood about rendering, but then I didn't understand much about live rendering. And then I, uh, and then, like, importing assets. That's a whole big thing. Also, you have to make your own assets, too, or, or find assets in an asset store. But then your game looks like other people who's had those assets from an asset store. What if you need an asset that's not in the asset store? Then you have to learn how to make assets. Well, that means you have to make stuff in Blender, or you have to buy them from somebody who can make them in Blender, or you have to, you have to, uh, Medium is something. In VR, I learned how to, to make assets in Medium, and you can do that in VR, and it's a lot easier than Blender, but the problem is, because it, it's like sculpting with clay, but the problem with that, that took me days. It took me days and days of fooling around with Blender to get to the point where, not Blender, I'm sorry, with Medium to get to the point where I really felt like I could make something. But then again, I'm still limited by my artistic ability. I've only had like, you know, 
high school art classes and stuff. Like, I know a little bit. I can make something kind of look okay, but I'm not an artist. Like, that is not my thing. I can do... I will fight you all day long. If you say I can't do video, I'll be like, ah, no, I can do video. But if you're like, you're not the best artist, you're right. I'm not the best artist uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And that, so that, that's the thing. You have to, like, wear all these hats to do it. It involves programming. And so I thought, okay, so I programmed in Python a little bit. And I thought, okay, if I programmed in Python, then I definitely knew how to, to, to do enough programming for this kind of thing and I jump in and I just I'm just lost I've never seen C sharp before I started using unity because that's why there's more documentation about how unity worked and things like that more people were willing to work with you when you were working on unity all my friends who said they wanted to help me and never really did anything to help me wanted to do stuff in unity and and I just kept thinking okay I'm gonna learn unity but then I didn't know anything about C sharp that's the programming language I didn't know anything about c-sharp and so when i it just all looked like japanese and people in these in these um and and i don't speak any japanese so it was really bad that i couldn't do anything so i would get into these tutorials and people would be like well you just take blah 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 you put it here you move it here you do this and then you open up the script and you tie it to this and that's the thing is not only you have to understand like a little bit about how programming works. What's accessible from that little script? What's not accessible? What can see it? What cannot see it? You have to understand there's a programming like libraries that are specific just for Unity. That like programming stuff that you won't see unless you're programming for Unity, like terms and phrases and things like that. Uh, when they would put like a dot behind something, I'm like, why does that change things? And it would, I was just so confused. It was just so big. And then I thought, okay. Well, let me take a course. So uh, I got an online course, and I started going through the course, and I they slowly teach you how to use C-sharp and how to program with C-sharp, and I learned some better programming skills, and I learned more about how to do uh, Unity, and I finally I made my first game. Uh, it was like a number generating. It was a n I had made one before in Python, but it was like a number guessing game, and it came with a GUI and stuff like that, and I was like, that's cool. I made this. Um, even though it looked just like everyone else's who made it, I still made it, and I was pretty happy about it. And then I thought, okay, okay, so I need to make uh, a better game. And then I made this this um, uh, silly little text adventure, but it worked. It worked exactly like it was supposed to. I made a text adventure game with graphics and words, and it would flop around, and I made it in Unity, and it's a text adventure game that worked. And I was like, that's awesome. I'm so freaking happy I'm able to make this game because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything on my own. I thought, surely, I'm used to using complex editors. I'm not scared away by terms like uh, 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 different codec types and things like that. Like, that, that stuff makes sense to me. And then I'm thinking, how come I can't do this game stuff? So finally, after taking this course, I can start messing with it and understanding it. And then I get to a point where I can like now understand the YouTube stuff. When they're jumping into a script, I'm not lost. And so now, after all of this, I can finally, I'm finally at a point where I'm thinking I can make a game. And I'm actually doing it. I made a game and it's got like a... I got a. I can do locks and keys and triggers, and uh, I can develop stuff, and I can import assets, and I'm I'm starting to make a game that's actually my game. It's 3D. It's actually VR, and it's working. It's working. Now, is it good? No, definitely not good. Definitely not yet. And my game developer, I would like to be one day. I'm gonna keep working on this. I want. I don't think I can really call myself one until I've either got a publishing deal or or had more than 10 sales. <laughs> Uh, that's a pretty low bar, I think, to more than 10 sales, but I'm willing to give myself that. I'll be a game developer once I've developed a game that's gotten 10 sales. Because I've made a couple of hobby games now, and that's exciting. And I can actually mess around in Unity. But that, it just took so much time. So the original question is, how come everybody wants to make games and nobody does it? It's because it's hard. It's legitimately hard. This is what I think a lot of people aren't saying is that it, it, it's hard. I've been watching game design videos 
for years, watching and rewatching them. And I feel like I'm just now getting to the point where I can have an educated game design conversation with somebody. And I mean, like, not just little videos, like in-depth videos, like GDC analysis and uh, and all that stuff. Where, uh, I've been I've been immersing in this world. It's been my like primary hobby. I've been I've been just researching and researching game design for a long time. And that's just the design. Like, I can know everything about game design and not actually be able to make a game. So now I'm actually able to make a game. I'm finally at the point where I'm making a game and I'm able to follow tutorials and things like that. And when I come to a new problem and I'm able to fix it and move on and continue to make my game and that is what I've been wanting to do for the past two years I hurt my shoulder like I was saying and I, I sat down to program and I sat down to, to learn it and it's taken me, taken me two years now I've not been doing this constantly for two years by any means but I've been I've been jumping in jumping out jumping in jumping out trying at different times and just just so determined to eventually get this I've been trying for two years to do it and now I know why everybody talks about game development and nobody does it it's a huge discipline it's got its own rules and it's got its it has several barriers to entry, which is unlike any of the other more technical hobbies and professions I've taken up. And so, if you're curious, I would say definitely do it if you want to make games. If you're thinking, I'm watching this video because I want to know why I'm talking about it and why I'm not doing it. You're not doing it because it's hard. If you're willing to do something hard, to learn something hard, I can tell you it is possible. You have to be willing to learn a lot, to take baby steps, to spend a lot of time learning stuff that's not directly making games. I spent a ton of time just, I bought a whole other C-sharp course where I was just practicing how to program in C-sharp without making games, just making applications, just so I could better understand what I was doing and feel more comfortable in that world. So, so totally do it, totally do it, but you don't do it if you're not willing to do something hard. It's going to take a lot of time, it's going to take a lot of effort, and it's hard. And it might not even have any payment options for it. Like, you might not be able to make money. You might make lots of money. I don't know. I'm not you. I don't know what games you have in your head, what you're planning on doing with it, if you're going to work for somebody else, if you're going to work for yourself. But it's hard. <laughs> and that's why. And that's what no one really talks about. Everyone talks about, like, hey, you should just make games. I have so many videos would just be like, hey... You should just make them. You should just make games. Go do it. Just go do it. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go do it. And I'd be like, uh, I didn't, what button do I press? I'd mess around with it. Everything would break and not work. And it would just be a headache after headache. And I'd have these massive headaches after I was done. Because I was just trying so hard to understand. And, and <laughs> finally, I'm understanding. Finally, after a lot of effort. So maybe it'll be easier for you than it was for me. Um, I'm still learning. I'm still creating. Uh, if you're interested uh, in this game, uh, stay subscribed. This channel is not about game development, but it is about uh, Tech Dive, Steven and I, and what we're doing and reviewing and product reviews and stuff like that. And uh, if you're interested in video stuff, I got a channel just for you there too. Uh, link below. And um, if you want to help us out, if you want to learn new things, if you want to try new things, you can sign up for Skillshare. If you sign up through Skillshare through our link, you'll get two months free, and that will give us a bonus kickback that will help us out a ton and let us continue to make videos and continue to try and create content, both videos and video games, things like that that you might like. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're looking for more. Like if this video helped you out. I'll see you next time. Oh, and the Switch. Uh, giveaway. If you're watching this wondering, is he going to mention the Switch giveaway? It's going. It's going good. We still got till December 1st to get 200,000 views on that video, but I think we can do it. I think you guys are doing great with it, and we're excited. We're, we're very excited. Uh, links for that below, too. See you next time.